Hi there, I'm Cecilia Jane. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be painting this piece of wood. So I'm holding it a little silly because it is uh, actually painted on the back and it's an oil painting so it is still a little wet. So yeah, I thought today we would just kind of do more of a little casual video and paint this piece of wood. I asked you guys on Instagram, um, what kind of picture would you like to see on this piece of wood? And I actually got the same amount of votes on every single design. So we are just gonna go with number two because that's kind of the one I wanted to do the most. But I like all those designs and I've done them before and I'll probably do them again. So yeah, we are gonna be working with oil paints on this wood. Um, I go through a little bit of the process of prepping the wood and everything. And then I kind of just talk you guys through the painting so if that sounds like something you're interested in, stay tuned. So I'm going to try to have the format of this video like me paint and then every so often talk while I'm painting. Um, traditionally I feel like I normally do like time lapses and then voice over them which are a little bit easier but I feel like this kind of like I feel like it kind of connects to you guys more because I'm actually talking while I'm painting so you guys get kind of a better feel for what's happening while I'm painting it but again the time lapses are easier so I'll put a poll here and also let me know like in the comments what you guys prefer if you guys prefer um, time lapses with me speaking over or like real time talking with painting so first before you usually paint any surface but especially with wood we are going to sand it and then we are going to gesso that so I'm just gonna do that really quickly. I'm gonna start with a sandpaper of about 60 and then move my way to 100. It doesn't have to be super smooth. And then I'm just gonna take this Liquitex basic gesso and just gesso over the surface, maybe two coats or so. Also, when you're sanding, you should be wearing a mask. So the reason we're sanding is just because the surface is a little rough and we want something a little smoother to work on. And then the gesso is just so that the wood doesn't eat our paint. It's a very like absorbing surface. So we wanna make it so that it doesn't absorb all of our paint. We don't use as much paint. Also, you're just gonna get more opaque colors on a white gesso. Okay, so that's feeling a lot smoother. You can continue to use different types of sandpaper to make it even smoother, but the gesso is gonna help smooth it out as well. So now you're just gonna gesso the surface. I recommend using a brush that um, either you have gessoed with before or you don't mind getting ruined. This is just a really rough like craft brush, so I'm not concerned with messing it up with gesso. Um, gesso just has a little bit of a grit, so it will ruin your brushes, um, make them less smooth, things like that. So yeah, now I'm just gonna kind of gesso it in kind of like a painterly fashion. I'm gonna leave the edges a little rough so that it kind of has that more painterly style. If you guys see like this container tape like flying out, I'm just using it to kind of prop it up so I'm not like completely breaking my back. But yeah, that's what that is. So now we're gonna gesso it. Okay, so that is the first coat of gesso on. We're gonna wait for it to dry and then we'll do a second coat. Okay, so I did the two coats and this is now dry. Um, before you begin painting or anything, make sure that this is completely dry because if you put oil paint on semi-damp acrylic, it's not gonna give like, like a coat of oil's not gonna allow the acrylic to dry underneath. Um, it won't be able to breathe and it could potentially like get moldy or something. I've never had that happen to me but it's just something that could happen, so make sure it's completely dry, basically. Actually, it's still a little tacky in some spots. But um, I'm just gonna quickly draw on kind of like the format of my design with a acrylic paint marker. Um, if this isn't dry right now, I mean, it's still a little tacky in some spots, it, it will be okay, because I'm just, I'll wait for it to dry longer after I doodle this on. I'm just gonna do that while I'm waiting. And I might go back and retouch this, but I don't know. I plan on laying on these oils pretty thick, so I feel like you wouldn't see any kind of imperfections or anything. So yeah, I'm just gonna draw on like the general format. So the way that um, I normally do oils, if you're trying to like complete them in like one day, um, you can't do something where you put the whole background color and then layer things on top of it because it's just not gonna dry and you're, Background color is gonna mix with your foreground color, so you'll have to really glob it on, and it's just a pain. So basically, the way to get around that is paint it kind of like you would a watercolor, like the same idea, where um, you're gonna paint in sections, which now with oil, you can do it, like I said, like kind of how I do it with acrylic. Um, you're just gonna have to wait a few days in between to dry, but I kind of just wanna get this start and finish today, so um, I'm going to do it that way, like I said, where it's I'm just going to do it in little sections so I don't have to wait for the paint to dry. Okay. 
Okay, so now that I've got something like this planned, I'm just gonna go scrape my paint palette and put the paint on my palette and mix up some colors while I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit. Alright guys, so this is completely dry. I have mixed my colors as I showed you guys. So yeah, we're just gonna start painting. Um, I might talk a little bit about my technique and such, but this is just gonna be more of kind of just like a chat and chill kind of thing. Um, if you want a video about how I specifically oil paint, um, let me know down in the comments. I could do that. Um, I paint more with acrylic, but I do enjoy painting with oil painting. I don't think I follow all the methods like exactly or whatever, but you know, I have fun with it, so. So yeah, let's just start painting. So I think I said this maybe in the beginning, but I do wanna try to get this to be kind of a chunkier painting, like have some depth and texture that you can see and feel. I've just really been into like that look of painting lately. Um, so I'm gonna go in and kind of layer this up. Initially, I kind of watered quote, water down this um, painting with, with liquid, which is just a medium you can buy that makes your paint um, like a little more like watery in a sense, which of course it's not water, it's more like oily, I guess you would say. And that helps you get more precise detail when, you, when your paint is like wetter, in my opinion at least. So I have some paint that's kind of mixed with that and some that's not. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like pack some of this on so I get some of that cool texture. And then we're gonna kind of repeat the same process with like the mushrooms and things like that. So. so like I said, I do like oil paint every once in a while, but I primarily do acrylic just because like for me personally, which I'm sure differs from person to person and like depending on your setup, but oil takes a little bit more time for me to like get everything out and like you need more materials, like in my personal opinion. And I acrylic paint like almost every single day because my my job, well, I mean, it is a job, but like I do pet portraits for a living and um, you know, it kind of requires me to take out acrylic paints like every single day to paint. Um, obviously it's not every single day, but mostly every single day. Um, so it feels like, I guess it feels easier in a sense for me to acrylic paint and just oil painting like if you guys know anything about oil painting, you know, it's like, in my opinion, which it may not be necessarily true, but it's like a little bit more toxic and like you have more of these chemicals that are like dangerous, which like, again, it could depend on what kind of paints and things like that you're using. I feel like for a lot of artists, it's like kind of intimidating, which I kind of, I get. That's why I'm not doing oil paintings like all the time, but I do really enjoy oil painting and I want to get more into it. It's just time <laughs> also i apologize if this glare you guys are getting it's like pretty hideous <laughs> um hopefully you guys can still like enjoy the painting maybe that's a little better so kind of what i'm doing now and <laughs> i apologize because i said i wasn't really going to talk about like technique that much but i feel like that's all i'm talking about so maybe i'll try to talk about like the painting here in a second but here what i'm doing now is i'm just taking that like that straight pink that I that I mix. I'm kind of dotting it on the spots where I want that pink to be like the purest. Like I want it to um, stay like mostly that color because I clean my brush and everything. So I want that, just that clean pink on there without it like having any of that green color and stuff mixed in there or any of the darker pink or anything. So I'm kind of laying this down as a base before my brush gets dirty and stuff. And also I can always dot this color like back on after if I need to. But yeah, now I'm just gonna go in and kind of dirty up that pink in some spot, spots, kind of darken it up, kind of mutin it, kind of mute it. I can't talk today. <laughs> kind of mute it in some spots and then basically just get all of the bottom of this covered. And then once it's covered, we'll go in and start like adding more details and things like that. As far as the painting goes, if you have, if you know me well, or if you've been around on my channel for a little bit, you'll know that I don't always like make art with, like I don't 
always, sometimes I do, but I don't always make it with like, oh, I'm doing this because of that and I'm doing this because of that. Like it's not always completely calculated and planned. Um, I would say like the color palette in this was like semi-calculated and semi-planned. Like I, obviously I did plan the color palette and I thought it would be fun to do like a limited color palette. But honestly, I just draw a lot of mushrooms and I like the idea of them being in nighttime. And also I've always, I mean, I've always been drawn to mushrooms. I feel like it is kind of like a thing right now. Like people are into mushrooms and like a lot of artists and stuff draw them. But I'm here for it because I love mushrooms and I think they're so fun. Also, I just think it's fun. It's like, this is kind of the same thing with flowers and kind of with a lot of things, but you can draw something kind of however you want it and then it's kind of universally recognized. Like everyone knows this is a mushroom, even though it's not like, <laughs> it doesn't flat out look like a mushroom. So I kind of enjoy that about mushrooms and that's why I probably paint them and stuff a lot. Also, I don't know why, but the idea of like a fairy garden kind of comes to mind, like something magical and like a little mystical. So that's probably some inspiration for this like painting and this idea is just that like fairy garden, like magical idea. Um, lately when I've been, my camera just cut out, so I apologize. I think I was like mid sentence and it cut out. But um, what I was saying is lately I've been scrolling on Instagram and I've seen a lot of these mushrooms that are like thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom, which I feel like is kind of the opposite of how mushrooms normally are. So I've been really intrigued to those kind of mushrooms and drawing them lately. I don't think they're probably, probably like anatomically correct. I don't know if you use the word anatomically to describe mushrooms or if it's just for like animals, but um, I don't know if they're like anatomically correct. I mean, there's probably mushrooms out here that are like this, but I feel like more often times than not, they're thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top but I've just been really intrigued with them so I kind of wanted to paint these. I kind of like forgot what I said and what I didn't because my camera cut out. But yeah, and also I just, I kind of wanted to do, I had a few different ideas for this. Like originally maybe I was gonna have these be like little fairy homes because I've really been into the idea of like fairy gardens and like, um, like just like magical things. Like I might have talked about this already. I don't know where my camera cut off, but I just wanted to do kind of like a quicker, painting for today's video because I want to try to start getting out videos like every week again. I used to do that for a little bit, um, but it's been hard because I have school and stuff, but I'm on break right now. But yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I have like a lot of long-term projects, like things that I want to finish that'll take a while to finish. So it's nice just to sit down and do something short-term and like have a finished product at the end of that. And so that was kind of like my hopes with this is like having you know, a nice like finished painting at the end of this. So that's why I'm just doing something a little quicker. Um, let me know if you guys like these types of videos where I'm just like kind of sitting down and painting and talking and stuff, or just let me know what you want to see in general. Um, I would love to do like the kind of videos you guys want to see. So, so yeah, just let me know. But yeah, as you guys can see, I'm kind of layering up the textures now on this and kind of some of the shading, I will probably go back to it again once I do the other ones and do more finished, finalized touching, touch-ups and stuff. So I kind of imagine this one, this one, and this one like very far back in the foreground. So I'm going to try to paint them much darker and like more with this color so that they look like they're further in the background. Um, so if you're wondering why they're gonna look so different from these three right here, that's because I'm gonna try to fade them into the foreground using um, like more color from the background so that they naturally kind of blend in with the background more. So now like really in the beginning I mentioned where like I might be just globbing over color where like I made a mistake kind of like so some of these dots are a little too big so what I'm doing is I'm basically just like putting the background color over top of it which I wouldn't recommend doing this like you know if you're not doing like a thick globby textured painting because it's not gonna look good it's gonna look globby and it won't fit the rest of your kind of aesthetic or something. Um, but since that's already what I'm going for, that's why it kind of works and that's why I can do kind of these paintings in one day. 
Um, I mean, you can do like something really smoothed out in one day. You just have to be a little bit more like meticulous and planned about it. That's why these are nice sometimes because you can just kind of like glob over what you want to be fixed. So that's kind of what I'm doing now and what I talked about earlier. Yeah, and so I'm just gonna go in with the um, kind of lavender, clean up the moon, add some highlights and things like that. And then I think we'll be close to done unless there's anything else I wanna do. Honestly, it's looking like a lot different than what I imagined, but I'm kind of just going with it and I kind of don't mind like where it's going kind of into it. Yeah, I think sometimes like paintings don't go exactly where you, like what you had in mind, but I think that's okay. And I think that's good too. I think that means like maybe you're learning or, you know, like growing as an artist. If something's m maybe a little challenging for you or if something's different than what you've done before, I think that's good. So honestly, now I'm kind of verging on done, but I'm not like super happy with it. And I'm not quite sure what it is. I think that it's like, it doesn't have as dark of values as what I wanted. So I'm gonna go in now, like I mix a little bit of this color with black, which normally I don't try to, like I don't really bring in black unless like, I feel like it's absolutely <laughs> necessary. Normally I just use like maybe, maybe a little bit of lamp black or maybe like nothing at all like that. I really want to like establish these values and kind of push them even further. So I am bringing in a little bit of black, which could change this kind of drastically. So hopefully it changes it in a good way. But I feel like if you're not completely happy with a painting, which maybe you'll never like 100% be happy with a painting, it's okay to take like risks with it because it's like, I don't know, if you're not like 100% happy with it, then you might as well try to like push it um, but also you don't want to like over push it, which can happen as well. Um, so probably here in a minute after I'm done with this, I will probably take a little bit of a break and then come back to it with like fresh eyes, if you guys know what I mean. So come back with it with hopefully like eyes that can see um, maybe what I want to change and stuff. Like if you haven't, if you take a little break, it'll help you kind of view what maybe needs to be changed or altered or what could make it look better. But yeah, so that's kind of where we're at right now is I'm just kind of like deciding what I want to do with it. If I want to kind of try to leave it or if I want to try to do something a little more drastic to it to help push it. So yeah, I'm wondering if because like originally the sketch I had, which I liked was very flat and this is so textured, maybe that's why I'm not a huge fan of it. So I'm wondering if I smoothed out the background a little bit, if that would maybe help. I don't know exactly. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna try to smooth out the background just a touch, just so that it's not so busy and maybe like doesn't like blend in so much with the um, foreground. I know I said I wanted like a nice unity between them, but I also don't want the background to be like too distracting from it, which I feel like is maybe what's happening right now. So I'm gonna try to go in and kind of smooth some of the background out just a tad. Okay, so honestly, I think smoothing out the background just a touch helped a lot. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go take that kind of mini break that I talked about to kind of give my eyes like a refresh and then I'm gonna come back and see if there's anything else I can do to this. All right guys, so I've been away for probably an hour, hour and a half or so. And so I'm just coming back to this painting with like I said, like fresh eyes. I think I talked about this, but it's good to come back because you kind of come back to it with a new perspective. Um, the longer you can wait, sometimes the better, but since I'm trying to do this all in one day, um, I kind of just want to get it done in all one day. <laughs> but um, I jotted down some notes that I thought, and I actually wrote these notes like prior to coming back. These are things I noticed like right after, which kind of defeats the purpose, but I tried to come back and reevaluate it again, and I kind of disagreed with the things I'd already written. So kind of what I was writing down stuff is, I think my reds are too cool. And actually in this camera, they're not showing up too, they're not showing up too cool, but in real life, they're very muted and are very um, cool toned reds in general, which means they're kind of like closer to a purple than they are closer to an orange. And again, it's not really showing up like that in the video, but I'm gonna try to add some more like peaches and stuff in here and maybe like orange up this color a little bit. Then I think it'll have nicer contrast between the background and the foreground. I'll probably leave the ones in the, the background still kind of muted like that and stuff so that they still stay kind of in the, the background. And then I also just said lighter stems, with, which is kind of just what I just said. Um, oranger stems, kind of what I said. 
and then possibly a darker background. I don't know, I'm pretty happy with this color so I may not darken it. I'm just gonna try to lighten these and add some more oranges as I stayed. So hopefully that'll do what I want. So yeah, I'm just gonna try to go ahead and add some more like orange tone things. So we'll see how that looks. Okay guys, so this is kind of what we're left with. Um, I did change a few things off camera. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the lighting. I did make the background a bit darker and then I did try to lighten up the stems and add more like orangey tones, like I said. I'm happier with it than it was. So yeah, I don't know, overall like, I think it's cool. It's not my favorite piece of art I've ever created, but I do enjoy it. I also noticed that like, in the um, mock-up I did, the piece of wood looked a lot lighter. I think I just took a picture of it in like direct sunlight or something. Whereas here, the wood looks super orangey. So I'm wondering like if that has an effect of how I'm viewing it because these parts are like more orange. I'll insert like a photo of like the one I posted on Instagram. So I'm like, I'm wondering if that has a little bit of an effect to it as well. And yeah, so I probably won't show it dry just because I won't have time to like film it while it's dry, but I'll definitely be posting a picture of it like on my Instagram eventually. So be sure to check my Instagram. I also put a lot of updates there and things like that. So go follow me on Instagram. All right guys, so here is the finished painting. Um, I'll probably do some close-ups. Um, like I kind of mentioned, it's not my absolute favorite piece of art I've ever created, um, but I think it's a lot better in person with the different textures and things like that. I was actually contemplating like redoing it completely, but eh, it kind of like, it's kind of grown on me. And every single piece you do is not going to be a winner, right? So I figured it's probably important for me to publish like the artworks that I'm not always 100% happy with. But yeah, I will probably try to post this on my Etsy, but um, in the meantime, or if I don't, uh, just message me on my Instagram if you are interested in it. I'd be more than happy to sell it to you and send it your way. And that goes with pretty much any of the art on my channel or anything I make. Um, if you're interested in purchasing it, just send me a message on Instagram. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the painting process. Let me know down below if you've ever tried oil paints and if you like them. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or found it helpful at all. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and maybe the notification bell. I am trying to post more regularly. Um, I kind of went through a little minute here where I didn't post, but I'm trying to post again. Please be patient with me. I am a full-time student and time artists kind of so so yeah i am trying <laughs> if you guys have any recommendations as well for any video ideas or things you'd like to see feel free to drop them down below in the comments and yeah thank you guys so much for watching bye and now a huge thanks to all my wonderful patreons if you want your name at the end of my videos monthly prints sent to your and other guys check out the link in the description